Hey there, welcome to Oki Outdoor Adventures. I'm coming at you today with another Tackle Warehouse unboxing video, but this one is going to be a little bit different. Now, I've talked about this in a couple of videos, but I always end up deviating and just kind of looking through the items and sharing with you what I purchased. So what I wanted to do today uh, is, is a little bit different. I wanted to explain to you how I'm rigging how I'm throwing and actually why I purchased the items that I purchased. Now I did mention in a video last week that I had a second package coming so the intention of this is not to show what I've spent or or show off my tackle haul but in this case I truly want to, to, to provide some level of feedback that hopefully you can benefit from. Now that said I am definitely not an expert um, but uh, based off of, of the research that I've done, feedback from friends, feedback from forums, online videos, I have a, a, a rather good idea and I have success. You can see on the channel, I, I, I catch a lot of fish. Um, not, not always great ones, but I catch a lot of them. Um, so I, I've got a general idea of, of what I'm trying to accomplish and I want to share that with you guys. So what I, I wanted to start off with first... Um, I went ahead and got the uh, the lure retriever, guys. We're gonna we're gonna get that attached. I'm tired of losing tackle, so I'm not gonna show you that very much. It was very cheap, but I've got a couple of different items here. This was a really small order, all things considered. And then I picked up two things yesterday uh, from Academy that I want to show you, and I'll explain why I'm throwing those as well. So we'll just get it kicked off uh, very easy, based off of uh, some testing that Alex's Alex was doing. I wanted to to give the Yozuri braid a chance. I ran out of braid. Uh, and I've heard good things about this. I've heard good things about J Braid. Um, uh, there's uh, there's a variety of others out there, but that's 50 pound in dark green. So I'm going to put it on probably my heavier setup when it's time to uh, to get that replaced. Right now I'm pretty good. I've got some old Cortland on there, uh, and it's it's held up very well. So in that vein, um, I did go ahead and pick up a couple of uh, Spro frogs. I've got a um, Oh, what did I get? The uh, Killer Gill and uh, the Rainforest Black. So, um, I've been fishing, and you'll see in the video I was fishing with the Rainforest Black this weekend, but that actually belongs to someone else. So, I want to show you the the colors. One of them's a Poppin' Frog. Uh, the Rainforest Black is a Poppin' Frog. This is a, a walking or, or gliding frog, right? So, I just want to take this out and kind of show you the colors. Now, it's worth noting, and I'm sure that some of you, especially the novice fishermen, won't know this or may not know this, but the frogs, these frogs are not actually intended to entirely imitate a frog. Uh, when in fact, when you see them on the water on the surface, the, a lot of the times they're imitating an injured bait fish or bait fish that are coming up and, and being active on the top of the water. I think we've all seen it when we're out fishing where you see the little pops and nips at the water. So a color like killer gill or even the black, it's it's really just creating a disturbance on the top of that water and um, imitating bait fish that are coming up. Now that's not to say that, say that in heavy cover where you're throwing a, a thick dense cover or or pads that you're not imitating a frog. It would be uh, it would be silly to suggest that you weren't, but they actually I believe are imitating bait fish on the surface. So for me, I throw these on heavy braid. Um, I throw 50 generally. Um, I've thrown as light as 30 without any issues, but I haven't really fished a lot of super thick cover. Uh, and some guys throw uh, higher than 50, but the, the markings on this Rainforest Black are, are pretty nice. It's black and yellow, got some yellowing in the skirt, and the Spro hooks are stupid sharp. So pretty, pretty happy with that. And I can give Chris's frog back and I won't feel guilty about it. Uh, Next on the list, I picked up three swim jigs. So I got them all in three eighths ounce. I'll take one out of the package, but I got the Divine uh, swim jigs from Six Cents. And the idea here again is throwing cover as grass starts to come back, spring is in full swing. Um, you can really fish these, these swim jigs a couple of ways. One, you could fish it like a traditional jig. Um, you obviously can swim it kind of in open water around rocky areas, but you can throw it in heavy cover as well and pull through. If you're weedless, then you're not going to get a lot of junk on your line. And uh, yeah, it's it's really quite nice. So I have not had any experience with six cents baits. I know a lot of guys throw uh, their crankbaits, uh, and I know that they're starting to get more and more plastics out. 
So just off the jump, the, uh, the skirting on this feels pretty amazing. Um, good sticky hook, and then I like the uh, I like the head on that. So again, throwing this into uh, heavy cover, and I'll throw it either. It, well, it just it really depends. Sometimes I'll throw it on uh, on fluoro to get that sink, but uh, depending on the cover, I may may put it on my braid, even if I'm tying a heavy leader on it. But for the most part, I'm throwing it uh, on fluoro. So you may dis disagree with that, but uh, that's just the way that I do it. And these do have the screw lock heads. So um, I got bluegill fire, uh, dark water gill, and I think this is a, like a green gill or something to that effect. But they're they're pretty nice. I mean, look at the color of the skirt again. That's it's really really pretty pretty saucy. Now to accompany the jigs, um, I had actually not experienced these. They're very popular with a lot of guys, um, but I picked up some uh, Yamamoto Zakos. And I have to say, after throwing them a little bit, the action on them is pretty, pretty phenomenal as far as trailers are concerned. Now, I do want to warn you, they're a little more expensive. So, I think this is a uh, six pack, and they're like seven bucks a piece or six ninety something a piece. So, they are definitely expensive. I got electric shad in this, and I got uh, green pumpkin white. Um, which I'll show you those two, uh, per pearl laminate. So I like the, I like the laminates, but you can see the, the coloring in that. And I'm sorry if the lighting is not great. I had to move inside. It's hot and the dog, neighbor's dogs were barking, but I'll use these on a trailer for chatter baits, for swim jigs, for, uh, anything where I'm trying to get that extra flutter behind the bait, especially if it's something that I'm swimming. So something I'm, I'm working a little faster, like a chatterbait, swim jig, whatever. I'm using those uh, for that. Now, I haven't traditionally thrown them, so it's going to be hit or miss for me on Zakos, but I do like throwing paddle tails, rigging them upside down so you get a little bit of extra wobble. Um, and striking has been good to me in that regard, but I wanted to give these Zakos a shot because they kept highly recommended. So. Similar, I guess, this is what I picked up from Academy, and we'll get back to the other order here in just a second, but uh, from Alex's initial recommendation on the Craws, I saw the Churros. Um, and these are pretty cool, so I'll take them out of the package in just a second, but this is uh, this is 13 Fishings Swim Bait. These are four and a quarter at three eighths ounce. I got Moonlight Clean and Smoke and Mirrors. And I gotta say, the coloring on these is pretty nutty. You may not be able to catch it in camera right here, but if I can get in the light just right. So that's that's kind of a blue tint and then a little bit of a clearer body, but they're, uh, they've also got that the split body and kind of an interesting interesting head shape on those, which I'm trying to keep my face out of that and still show you the head shape. So you may be able to clip that down. I don't know if you can see the the gap there, you could cut that and it would uh, butt up nicely to a jig or a chatterbait or uh, just about anything else. I imagine you could probably throw these on a rig too. Oh, also, check out the size of that uh, that boot or paddle or whatever we're going to call it. That thing is, is giant and it's soft back here in the back, so I imagine it's going to stir up uh, quite a bit of action. I'll let you know how that goes. Uh, I want to be more conscientious uh, about letting you know how certain tackle is performing uh, this is the uh this is the smoke and mirror so it's a standard like white with uh, that silvery flake in it put this one to go before i get hurt uh i am not going to tell you how to throw sinkos um i would be naive to even suggest that i am an expert when it comes to these but i do love these seven inch yama sinkos i got green pumpkin with red flake and then my favorite my all-time favorite color for stick bait whether it's a Senko or whatever it is, is this baby bass. Um, this color is, to me, just absolutely nutty. Um, I get bites on it and black and blue more than any other color. Now, may have something to do with where I'm fishing, may have something to do with the temperament of the fish. I may just get lucky, but I get more bites on those colors than any other color. Uh, I also, because of some of the locations that I've been fishing and some su successes that I've seen, I picked up uh, two packs of uh, flukes. So I got two packs of salty super flukes. I got a bluegill flash and a um, uh, bait fish. So I'll, I'll show you the bluegill flash. I'm throwing these 
I'm throwing these T-Rig weightless. And you can fish it a couple of ways, right? You can uh, just give it a slow retrieve and it will naturally kind of zip through the water. Um, I'll like to retrieve, give it a flick, let it pause, retrieve, flick, pause, uh, rinse and repeat. And so you can pull that over pads, you can pull it through cover, you can fish it just about anywhere. But uh, uh, I haven't done a whole lot of fluke fishing in my life, but I have seen people fish with flukes successfully. I think Alex has a video on his channel where we went to a little pond and he was throwing flukes and just absolutely killed it. But uh, I'll show you, I'll go ahead and show you the, the bait fish color. And it's kind of nice. Uh, it's got, and that's that's actually really nice. I'm trying to share the light with you here. Get my thumb in the way so it blocks out my face. But that's that's a really nice color. Again, um, I didn't get a magnum size. I just got the, uh, the uh, what are they, the, like the four inch, um, four inch supers and they're, they're pretty nice. So uh, the other two items I got specifically uh, to one, you're going to start seeing, if you're not already, you're going to start seeing fry. Um, so bass are going to be protecting nests um, and you're going to start getting some of those reaction bites. Additionally, we should start seeing, if we haven't already, the bluegill spawn. So I got the Little Creeper um, All-American Sunfish. I wanted to give this a shot. And I pulled these out of the packaging because it's warm in Oklahoma today and they were getting like ultra soft and I wanted to let them kind of chill out a little bit. So I don't know if you can get the coloring on that, but they've got kind of a brownish yellow kind of silver thing. They're a little bit bigger profile. I also got the little creeper uh, tucked out, just shad, the, tr the trash fish. So you can see those. And I think you've seen me throw these on video before, but I wanted to try the sunfish to see if I could, again, uh, target some of those bedding areas or some of those areas where we're seeing fry and create a reaction bite. Uh, and especially with the bluegill spawn either here or on its way, uh, you're going to start seeing some additional activity there. So bass are going to be hitting at those bluegill that are getting around nests and trying to mess with fry. Now, here comes the catch. Um, I throw these, or I whoop, I say that I throw these. Um, I originally bought seven on owner weighted beast hooks. And unfortunately, I paid the price for that. So if you look on Tackle Warehouse, it actually recommends a smaller hook I went ahead and upgraded to both 8 aught and 10 aught, um, just to account for the uh, uh, the the width of the body and the ability for a fish to compress that down and be able to get it at a hook set. So something that you will notice with these trash fish is this this cut. Um, in the top of the the trash fish using the, or fishing that EWG um, it pushes through that cut fairly well but you want to keep that hidden so that you can rig this uh, as weedless as possible because you can fish this at all different levels of the water column um, you can burn it a little bit faster and get it up high and it creates an interesting wake so this tail really flutters and creates a nice little wake you can fish it a little bit slower fish it at medium in the column and it's got just a phenomenal action where I've had the best success, though, is throwing this, letting it drop to the bottom, and then popping. So you're, you're moving it along, and it's still getting that fantastic action, but it's getting scooped up really quick. I've got a lot of bites that way. Um, it's absolutely phenomenal. So with those screw lock uh, owner hooks, there's a spot right here where you're going to screw into the bait and push it through the belly, out through the back. Now, one recommendation that I will make for you, and I'm still guilty of this, I forget every time, is take toothpicks with you. And when you have your hook pushed through the back here, so your hook will come through similar to this. I know my finger's giant, but you can push a toothpick between the shank of the hook all the way through the body, clip off the ends, and because this, this plastic is so soft, uh, after several casts, your, your hook's going to continue to work its way down and eventually it'll get buried in that plastic and you're going to end up missing fish. So I suggest that you take that toothpick, drive it through the bait, clip those ends off and it'll hold that hook up so one fish bites down, it's compressing that plastic and you're getting the full stick on the fish. So just something to think about. And I'll show you guys what that looks like. I'll, I'll do it in another video, get it rigged up for you and you can take a look there. Um, so that's pretty much it guys. I, I got a pack of wacky hooks, but uh, you probably don't care to see that um, 
again, the, the entire intention here was to, to explain a little bit more of the why I do what I do and how I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, I'd like to go out and show you guys um, how I work each of these baits individually. So we may do that in another video if you guys want to see that kind of content. Uh, please let me know in the comments if you're interested in that. I will make it happen. If you've made it to this point in the video, guys, I absolutely 100 appreciate your support. This is kind of a longer video as far as unboxings are concerned. So uh, thanks for sticking with me. If you haven't already subscribed, you may consider doing so at this time, please. I would certainly appreciate it. Helps the channel grow. Um, also, press that thumbs up button. Let me know in the comments what you think about what I've got in this very, very small order, how you would work it if it was your tackle, or any tips and suggestions that you'd like to provide that I can share with the audience. Thanks, guys. We'll catch you next time on the water.